What do your shoes have to do with scoliosis? Hi guys, I'm Dr. Houlihan, and today I'm gonna to be presenting to you my footwear scoliosis hypothesis. This is a hypothesis that I'm hoping will be substantiated in the research within the coming decade or so. I might have to get out there and do it myself if no one takes the initiative. But today I'm gonna to explain to you guys what your shoes have to do not only with the development, but with the treatment of scoliosis. Now when we're talking about scoliosis, I'm talking about adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. Idiopathic means of unknown origin. A lot of the times we don't know what causes the scoliosis. We know that there's different factors involved such as genetics, such as gender. My hypothesis is that footwear is also one of the major factors involved in the development of idiopathic scoliosis. So let me first talk about a couple problems that people with scoliosis are inherently more subjected to. These problems include decreased balance, decreased proprioception, leg length discrepancies, back pain, and postural deviation. However, for this hypothesis, people with scoliosis are more likely to have generalized joint hypermobility and flat feet. So what do flat feet have to do with scoliosis? When we're talking about a flat foot, we're talking about a collapsed medial longitudinal arch. Now this arch is completely supported by muscles and if those muscles are not functioning properly or functioning at all, then that arch is going to collapse and those effects can be seen upstream throughout the entire skeleton. I'm going to show you guys a series of images here and keep in mind none of these images were produced by organizations that have anything to do with scoliosis. So for all of these images, you're going to see that the medial longitudinal arches collapse. That's going to cause the knee to turn inward into a valgus position and the pelvis on that side is going to drop downwards. Now, if you look at the spines of all of these skeletons, they all have scoliosis. So when we have a collapsed medial longitudinal arch, it causes the knee to turn inward into a valgus position, the pelvis on that side drops downward, and the spine can deviate laterally, and that can be the genesis of the scoliosis. So how does your footwear selection play into the equation here? The benefits of being barefoot or wearing minimalist shoes are numerous, and the research is plentiful. I did a video that talks a little bit more about the research in that area. You can check that video out if you're interested. This slide is from a presentation I gave earlier this year summarizing some of the benefits of being barefoot or wearing minimalist shoes. If you take a look at this list, you'll see that a lot of the problems on this list are the same problems that people with scoliosis are inherently more subjected to. So why are we ignoring the feet? I can guarantee if you went to a physical therapist and they evaluated you and they determined that your quadriceps were weak or your glutes were weak or your calves were weak, the solution would be to strengthen those muscles. For whatever reason, we are doing the exact opposite to our feet and we are weakening the muscles when the problem is that they were too weak to begin with. Custom made orthotics for your shoes have been proven to make your feet weaker and 99.9% .9 of the footwear on the market today is no different, they are weakening our feet. So this is where it gets interesting. The research substantiates that flat feet are less common in habitually unshoed populations, in people of lower socioeconomic status, in rural areas, in eastern nations, in developing nations, and in island nations. Taking a look at the research in relationship to scoliosis prevalence, the prevalence of scoliosis also happens to be lower in all of those same demographics. The research is pointing towards the fact that demographics with weaker feet are more likely to have scoliosis, and demographics with stronger, better functioning feet are less likely to have scoliosis. Now, scoliosis is a multifactorial condition. Things like genetics, height, gender, all play a role in the development of scoliosis. My hypothesis is that footwear and foot function also plays a role in that development. So I put together a chart here that demonstrates my proposed relationship between scoliosis and footwear. The chart might look a little bit jumbled, but stick with me here. Posture, balance, foot function, and proprioception are all factors that are influenced in persons who have scoliosis, and posture, balance, foot function and proprioception are all factors that can be improved by barefoot or minimalist shoe conditions. Therefore, this graph works in both directions. If someone is proactively using barefoot or minimally shoed conditions to prevent any deficits in those four central factors, or if someone who's already been diagnosed with scoliosis and is having these issues, we can work backwards and treat those issues and decrease the limitations imposed by scoliosis by using barefoot conditions or minimal shoe conditions. So that is my footwear scoliosis hypothesis. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. A lot of the research used in this video today was released this year. So all this stuff is brand new. It's emerging as we speak. If there's any major updates to this hypothesis, I'll be sure to keep you guys in the loop. And as always, be on the lookout. I'll have more videos coming soon.